you folks had a little bit of trouble getting here. Working on the L. The address, if you put the address in your GPS. You can get lost. I ended up way out. Yeah, it tells you an invalid address. If you put the restaurant in there, you don't have much trouble. But if you put the address in, you got a little lost. I just stopped by down the street finding where I was at. We worked out for you, Mr. Restaurant. Five days back. But if it's got good food, it's no problem because the first person I asked, she says, you've never ate there? She said, it's really good. It's back up this way. <laughs> and I was way back down here nowhere. And I was like, where are they at? So, um, maybe what we'll do first uh, is go around the room a little bit like we normally do. And we'll start, uh, actually, Darwin, let's, since we've got somebody new on your side, Darwin, we'll start over there with you. and. Just tell where you're from and who you are for everybody here that might not know you. My name is Darwin Easton and uh, I'm from Lenox, Georgia. Andy Stone from Fargo. Dustin Rushing from Statesboro. Cliff Lewis from Georgia EPD. Tell them who you with. Georgia Soul and Water Conservation. And I'm cool. Scott Down from Ben Hill County. Great. Great at Thompson. I'm from Tip County. I'm Mike Hill, you from Bradley County. I'm Dan Rice from Turner County. Ben Copeland from Old Nick County. Daniel Atkins from Georgia Forest Commission. Andrew Daniel from Department of Community Affairs. Emily Davenport with the City of Augusta. Angela Bryant from the City of Augusta. I'll next to the Hey, hey. Lee, go ahead and tell me who you are. I'm Lee Elkins with Provence Institute of Government at the University of Georgia, and I'm your facilitator. Carol, go ahead. Carol Corsi. I'm a peanut farmer from Brookfield, Georgia. All right. And I'm a John Quarterman of the Walls Watershed Coalition. If you didn't get one of these, I'd be happy to give it to you. Bring one. Okay, most of us know each other. I, I just wanted to go around the room. We do have a new, new uh, guy in the group. So I was just going to kind of let you guys. Um, introduce yourself to him. Um, the first thing on our agenda today is the review of operating procedures and all that stuff that we talked about last. That's the last week's agenda, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. your other packet. Yeah, I'm, my bad. That's okay. <laughs> I said it on top of it. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the uh, things that we talked about in the last meeting. Some of you, did everybody get an email copy, please? Did we email copies out of that or just? This, that was not emailed out. Okay. Or you don't want to get sent? Oh, uh, yes. I don't want to get sent. This. this is not stack of stuff here. Did y'all get a stack of stuff? No. If you, if you weren't here last time and you got your notebook today, it's the second section of your notebook. There's a yellow divider. I've got. Um, oh, okay. I'm not here. Carol, I've got a packet for you. What we talked about last time was the inner council documents, uh, how we might want to approach uh, these other councils about doing some things together. I believe has done a fine job of writing up some of uh, agreements. This one's a couple of others. Um, so if you will, just take a minute and read what we have for uh, <coughs> recommendation for inner council planning. Make sure, uh, first and foremost, that it's what we discussed, those of y'all that were here at the last meeting. Um, make sure that all your concerns or everything that you all the ideas that you might have had and presented to us on the whiteboard that day are in there. So let's take a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, and just read through that. Well, not a problem. It won't take me long. 
And this is actually this is just if you'll the top paragraph notes um, the charge of the council was each council should develop a recommendation to EPD on whether and how they would like to engage with other councils during the review and revision process. The recommendation should identify the councils and topics for further coordination and the recommended steps and time frames for conducting that coordination. The recommendation should cover the period of time from initiation of coordination up through a maximum time horizon of September 2016. And the, the point to begin the intercouncil uh, planning, working with other councils, will really be this next planning phase. So probably end of September, beginning of October through next September. So this is just laying out here are the other councils and the topics through which this council feels like engagement would be, uh, or planning together some, or having some conversations would be important. makes it through that one there's one more sheet uh, which is the implementing actors just uh, take a quick look through that those are um, all of the things that we discussed in the second half of our meeting last time <coughs> so if you just look through there and make sure all your ideas got on there and people that you wanted to engage or who you thought needed to be implementing actors uh, we had some good ideas on that I thought make sure all of them got on there if you don't mind. We don't have a quorum, do we want to have a vote of affirmation on both of these documents just among the group to say that we did it? I think so. I think it's, I think it's fine. I mean, I think that, um, I think EPD would advise us to work with who we have. Okay. Well, let's, let's take the first, the number two <laughs> item on the agenda, the uh, inter-council planning document. If everybody's okay with that, we'll uh, have a vote of affirmation on that. Um, those are uh, Daniel, I, I got one of a quick short question uh, on an action for storage and recovery to report on a test well over in Baker County. I guess my question is, was test well in Baker County pertinent to Swanish and Teller recharge? Yes. You want to answer that, Bob? Yeah, well, with regard to the test, it was a feasibility study to determine if aquifer storage and recovery could, could, be, uh, could be used. Um, there was two things that we needed to do uh, in order to proceed with that test. One is we needed to get 500 gallons per minute uh, yield so that we could move forward with the test. Um, the other thing that we were doing with the feasibility test was testing the water quality from the Claiborne Aquifer. 
that was we were able to do that. We were able to get a lot of information from that, um, but we only got about 200 gallons per minute from that location. Um, nine miles from there is the Stripling Irrigation Park. They're getting ready to put that well in. They're getting 500 gallons per minute from that well. So uh, I'm thinking that this is probably just a bad location for us to do, to do that feasibility study. However, it's a good location for us to continue to get data. Um, so we'll continue to do a uh, monitoring uh, monitoring well at that site. Um, so in terms of impact in this the Swanee Satilla region, it won't directly. However, the technology, um, and then, well, you know, if, if it's done again, if it's moved to another location, um, if the feasibility study is performed in, in another location and some data comes about it, it could it could at some point in the future, you know, be something that could be used in another location of the state. It doesn't mean it'd be the near future. You better hope you don't have to go to that. You better hope you don't have to go to that because that is that is expensive. Real expensive. Uh, oh, we were involved with the stripping part, but we weren't involved with the other other. And uh it's a precise way to do it. And we used stainless steel and kept developing screens way up the south of the spot, so that meant that the sand was real fine. And uh, we, we pulled the sample, sent them to Houston, we got screens made for that well. For a well that used to cost forty fifty thousand dollars at the most, we bid it, we were the low bidder at one hundred seventy five thousand. You got to shut off all the